Hello everyone and welcome. I'm continuing on with my video series on Java programming for beginners. In this video I introduce a useful guide to help you write methods correctly in Java. More specifically I provide a set of six questions to help you write a method signature correctly. Now the method signature is somewhat like the foundation of a house. If you build a good foundation you are well on the way to building a good house. But if the foundation is bad then, no matter how well you built the house itself, it is not going to last or serve well the purpose for which it was built. So, in a similar manner, if you design the method well, it serves as a solid foundation upon which to write the method itself. Okay? So, let us recall what is a method signature. Well, in Java, the method signature consists of the method name and its parameters. So the method's name here is main and its parameters are string arg, string and args where string is an array. Okay, just to point out, technically in Java, the return type and the access modifiers and a static keyword are not considered part of the method signature. But for the purpose of this video, we will consider the return type as part of the method signature. Okay, so I'm going to use the example of a method to compute the sum of two values and return the result. So the first question is, we should ask ourselves, what is the method name? Okay, so we should choose an appropriate method name that succinctly describes what the method does. Well in our case we want to compute the sum of two values, so I'm going to call the method compute sum. So this is what our method signature looks like after question one. The second question is, does the method take any parameters? Well, the answer is either yes or no. So how do we decide if a method should take parameters or not? Well, it all depends on what the method is doing. In our case, we wish to, re uh, we wish to compute the sum of two values and return the result. So ideally, we should pass the two values as parameters to the method. Now there is a caveat to this. If the variables are already globally available to the method, they don't have to be passed. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, if there were fields, class fields, such as int a, for example, is equal to 5, let's write that down there. So a is a field of this class, and this field or variable is globally available to every method that exists within this class. So that's an example of a globally available field or variable. Okay, but in our case, we don't have any. We have two variables, but they're within the main method. The compute method does not have access to these variables. It's outside the scope of this method. And just to clarify what the scope mean, the scope of a method is all of the statements within the open curly brace and the closed curly brace of the method. So the compute some method is not within the scope of the main method. Hence, we will have to pass parameters to this method. So our method signature now looks like this. So we put in a space to indicate that this parameter is expected. If there were no parameters expected, we would write something like that. So we're going to incrementally build up our method signature. OK. The third question is, what is the return type of the method? Now, if the method does not return any value, then the return type must be void. Otherwise, the return type should be whatever type is required. Well, in our example, we're going to compute the sum of two numeric values and return the result. So the two values that are being passed in are an int, so we're going to return an integer as a result. Hence, we update our method signature and as follows. We put the int uh, data type as a return keyword here. OK. The next three questions concern the parameters of the method, and they all depend on the answer to question two. If the answer to question two was no, the method does not take any parameters, well, we stop there. But if the answer was yes, as it was in our case, then we have three more questions that we must ask. And the first question that we ask, or, or technically the fourth, question 2.1, is how many parameters does the method take? Well, let's have a look what exactly we're trying to do. The answer is based on exactly what we're trying to do. So in our case, we want to compute the sum of two numbers. Hence, we would take two parameters. 
So I'm going to update my meta signature to put in a comma to indicate that there's going to be two values. If there was three values, I will put in a second comma, and so on. So this is what our meta signature looks like. As you can see, we're incrementally building it up, and it's a nice way to do it. By following these sequence of questions, we can logically and incrementally build up our meta signature and be sure that it does exactly what we want it to do. The fifth question, question 2.2, is what are the types of the parameters? So we now know that there are two parameters, so we want to know what are the types of those parameters. Well, again, it's always go back. How do you know what types you should select? Well, again, look at what it is we're trying to do. In our case, we're trying to compute the sum of two numbers. And as you can see, the numbers have already been defined as integers. Therefore, we're going to pass in integer values. So now let us update our, our method signature by specifying the types explicitly. And there we go. So I specify int and int. And this is our method signature after five questions. There's only one more question to go. The sixth and last question is, what are the names of the parameters? Now, we ideally should choose an appropriate name for our method parameters. And what do I mean by appropriate? I mean a name that succinctly describes and conveys the meaning and purpose of the variables. For example, if we're going to uh, determine, perform some action with a price, we would call the variable price or sales tax or income tax and so forth. Okay, but in our case, we're computing the sum of two values. This is a trivial method, so it would be okay simply to call the variables A and B. So I've updated the method signature here, and this is what our final method signature looks like. Now, we obviously haven't completed the method itself. To complete the method, well, we'd have to add the curly braces, the opening curly braces, to define the scope of the method, and then obviously we have to, to perform the computation itself, which is compute the sum of A and B and return result. Now, as it happens, that's a very trivial statement. We can simply write return A plus B, and that'll do it. Okay. All that remains to complete our program is to compute the value of x and y and display the results. So I'm going to cut and paste the code in that I've already written. So as you can see, we invoke compute sum, passing to it two variables x and y, and we assign the result of this computation to sum. So compute sum receives x and y as a and b, it computes their sum and returns the result as an integer, and finally we display the results. So let's see, does this work? Compile, oh, I have one error. Non -stat that's of course, when you call a static method, a non-static method from a static method, it won't work. So I must add in the static keyword. It's good that you see that error in case you make that yourself. So let's try that again. Compile, I compile successfully, and run. The sum of two plus three is five. So the program has run correctly. In summary, we should ask six, six questions when we wish to construct the method signature. The first question is, what is the method name? The second question, does the method take any parameters? That's a yes or no answer. And the third question is, what is the return type of the method? Now, depending on the answer to question two, if the answer was yes, then we can ask three more questions. And they are, how many parameters does the method take? What are the types of those parameters? And lastly, what are the names of those parameters? So with those six questions, they're a very useful guide to help you construct the method signature of any method you wish to write, no matter what it does. Now, before I finish, I just want to say one more thing. There is one other important question. This is probably more an advanced feature, but there's one more important question you should always ask, and that is, does the method signature make logical, technical, and conceptual sense? Okay, that sounds like there's a lot there. But basically, what I'm asking you to do is to consider the method as a whole. Consider the signature of the method within the context of the entire method, basically from a holistic point of view. And ask yourself, does the method do exactly what it's supposed to do when it's supposed to do it? Now, believe it or not, this method is buggy. It's possibly one of the simplest methods you can write. Its body consists of only one line, but believe it or not, it works only 99% of the time, but most definitely not 100% of the time. There is a problem with this method, and I will go through exactly what that problem is and explain the solution to that problem in a follow-up video. So thank you very much for watching. Bye now.